In this video, I'm going to take you through how to use the formula to work out the area of a trapezium. First of all, you need to be able to recognise a trapezium. A trapezium is a quadrilateral, that's a four-sided shape, and two of the sides are parallel lines. The other two sides don't have to be parallel. OK, but a, certainly one pair of sides must be parallel in order for it to be a trapezium. And identifying those parallel sides is important because they form part of the formula to work out the area of a trapezium. Let's have a look at the formula as it's normally presented. Um, and at the moment, at the start of GCSE exams, you get this formula given to you. A picture of a trapezium is presented, and there are two little arrows on the top and the bottom line. And those arrows indicate that the lines are parallel. Those two parallel lines are labelled with their lengths being A and B, respectively. And the distance between them, and it's measured at right angles, um, which I'll come back to in a minute, it, the distance between them is called the height or h and the formula itself is half brackets a plus b close brackets times h and the way I normally tell people to do this is to add the parallel sides that's what a and b are they're the parallel sides and then half that number and then times it by the height So let's see if we can follow that process through on question number one here. It says uh, we've got a, a trapezium like this, 10, 8 and 16 are the numbers. We've got to work out the area using the formula. So I would start by saying let's add together A and B. A plus B are the parallel sides, 10 plus 16. So I'm putting A plus B, in my head I'm doing 10 plus 16, which is 26. Now that height I haven't put in just at the moment. I just made a mistake with it there really, but I'll put it in on the next one. But I would suggest you always do the A plus B first and then half it. So half of 26 is 13, and then you can times by the height. The height is 8 in this case. And 13 times 8 gives you 104. Let's just check that on the calculator. Yes, 104. OK, let's have a look at this next one. This next one highlights what I was saying earlier about H being the perpendicular height. Perpendicular means at right angles, um, and the key point on this next question, question 2, is that we've got the 7 and the 11, they're obviously A and B, the parallel sides, but then for some people it would be perhaps unclear which one is the height. Is it the 4 or is it the 5, or do I need to use both, or what do I need to do? You need to make sure you're using the height which is measured straight up. Anything which is sloping, like this 5, is not going to be any good. Think about when you measure your height. Here you are. There's you. You measure your height straight up from your feet. If you measured them from some point over here, if you've got a tape measure and you've got a friend to stand on it over there and you measured that height, you would be a heck of a lot taller. OK? You need to make sure that you are measuring heights straight up from the ground. So here I'm going to use the 4 and in fact I'm going to cross out that 5. So the area is going to be half, let's add together a plus b, 7 plus 11, that's 18, times the height which is 4. So now I want to do half of 18 And then I need to times that by 4.
which gives me 36 centimetres squared. Last up, number three. This is a trapezium. It's been drawn perhaps what you might consider sort of the wrong way round. Um, there are lots of things that you can do with this, but the important thing to remember is that that height that we were talking about is really the distance, the perpendicular distance between the parallel lines. So one thing that you might consider doing is what I'm going to do now, redraw the shape so that you've got it the right way around. The right way around in, in inverted commas. So 10 and 14. Oh, I've accidentally written centimetres there. These are metres that we're talking about. And 10 metres is the perpendicular height. So let's apply the formula. We're going to be using half A plus B times H. So the A plus B is going to make 10 plus 14 is 24. That's half of 24 times H, which is 10. Half of 24 is 12. And when I times that by 10, I get 120. And again, notice the unit meters squared this time. Oh, I wrote centimeters there again. Can't stop writing centimeters. Meters in each of these cases. So your answer needs to be in meters squared.